Okay, this is going to be a video talking about fluid flow. The previous cases we discussed have all been static um, cases of fluids. In other words, the fluids haven't been moving or changing their speed in any way, shape, and form. When we're calculating the pressure of a column of liquid, that liquid was, for the most part, stationary. What we're going to do in these couple slides is talk about what happens when a fluid flows, and in particular, we're really interested in what happens to its pressure and its velocity as it goes into different systems of areas or volumes or different pipes more particularly. So on this set of slides I will be able to talk about the continuity equation and show you how more or less to use it and its different applications. I'm going to define for you and show you how you can calculate something like flow rate or volume rate although those are the same things. Um, this video will not actually get to Bernoulli's pitchable, but the next following video as well. So I just want to point out that fluids in general are pretty complex and we're going to simplify them to make the modeling a little easier. Um, fluids can be defined in terms of many things such as their density, their pressure, and their velocity. And fluids in real life actually have these three very, um, these three factors varying in all different areas. So um, sometimes you could have something a little more dense over here and less dense over here. Um, pressures could be different, velocities could be different, um, and these can vary in all different locations. So we also will be considering these things called uh, viscosity, and in short, it's just a word for friction in a fluid. Um, what happens is the liquid will actually interact with the walls of the container and within itself. So we have some energy loss due to that and we call those drag forces in particular we call that viscosity. Uh, we will not do that. Uh, we'll make sure that we'll just keep these things what we call steady state. Although they're not officially steady, these things are actually moving. Um, we're going to be considering the fact that those these properties will not change within the fluid. So if we're looking at this area right here we're going to see that the pressure along this vertical line more or less won't change and for our purposes usually in the AP they won't actually consider the fact that yes technically the pressure does lower as you get lower in the liquid but for the most part this will stay the same in any of those locations. In fact I'm just going to emphasize that with this animation. So I've already set up a, an example very much like the one that I had before in fact can I make it um, no, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, um, so steady state means that if you see the speed in this whole area is the same. Um, also, you'll see that more or less the pressure. Now, this actually takes into account the pressure changes per height, which makes sense, but you can see that the pressure within the same height more or less stays the same. And that's what we'll do here. Same thing over here. You'll see that the speed does change over here. Um, but in this area, this speed is roughly the same. Now, there's tiny fluctuations because you can see that the edge right here is not perfectly straight. But that's what uh, steady state means. Um, so we're going to do an ideal fluid too. There's no friction or viscosity. It's not comprehensive. I'm sorry, compressible, meaning that we can't change the density of the fluid, and it's the same in all areas. Now these things have streamlines. Uh, well, we actually don't. They don't have streamlines, but we use streamlines to help us visualize what the flow is doing. And you can see from this here, uh, streamlines are drawn in, and we can kind of make an educated guess without any knowledge of the system that over here it looks like it's going to be a little faster because these lines are actually closer together versus these lines, and they're basically telling us the direction of velocity. Now, the streamlines won't cross because that would indicate they'd have two velocities in one location, and that's not going to happen according to our models. So continuity. This is really big and huge, and if you had to take anything home, it would be this out of the slides, is that the rate at which the mass flows has to be the same at every point. All that means is if you have 5 kilograms of mass entering here, you should absolutely have 5 kilograms of mass exiting here. Not only that, but the rate at which it does. So 5 kilograms per second has to enter, 5 kilograms per second has to leave. Which makes sense because the liquid is not going to 
um, have any frictional cases with it. Um, so there shouldn't be any mass loss. And that's what I mean by continuity. It's continuous. So mass rate is literally defined as a rate in that we have a change in mass over the change in time. The units for that is a kilogram second. Um, kilograms for mass, T for second, um, as you can see here. And what happens with that is, this is fine and dandy, but do, things do change. Um, when you have something like a large pipe or one that has a big area versus a small pipe, we know from experience that those things will actually change um, in this case the velocity. If you take a hose originally and then put your finger over it making a smaller area we know that the velocity must be faster. Well that must make sense because we have to keep the rate the same. So if you have a smaller area we need more to go through that and if we have a bigger area we don't need as much to go through that. So that's why the velocity and the area are directly related. Sorry this is cut off but it says fluid speed up or slow down depending on the area as you might imagine. So they actually refer to this as the cross-sectional area. And what cross-sectional area means is that if you take a pipe, which is typically a cylinder, and you literally cut it, and if we like took a knife and cut out, we'll find that the shape that it cuts out is a circle. So the cross-sectional area for a pipe is a circle, or the area would be 2 pi r. Um, in the AP, they will tell you either area or they'll give you most likely the radius and you have to calculate the area. So just be careful with that. If for whatever reason you forget how to calculate this, they do give you this on the equation sheet. But that's what they mean by cross-sectional area. In 90% of the cases, it's going to be a circle. So what the continuity equation actually alludes to or reduces down, well, I guess not reduces, but expands out is to the areas. Because that's actually a little more informative because we can measure the areas and get some idea about the velocity versus the mass and the time. So in here is just emphasizing that case. Here's an area of a certain size and a slightly different size. And we can see um, that the velocity will change based on the area. What I'm going to do in the next slide is show you how this comes about from using the original definition, which is mass rate. I'm going to do it in um, a slightly different way, although there is a way you can derive it using um, these features of length. I'm going to actually do it partially with uh, physics and partially with dimensions because I think it's a little easier to see. <clears throat> so we said before that the mass rate must be the same in those both locations. So the mass per time in one location has to equal the mass per time in another location. Now these 1 and 2 represent the two different locations. So this is, technically these are the same numbers at this point. But typically with fluids it's easier to talk about not the mass of the water, but talk about it in terms of its density per volume. Since the density is the same and the volume is a more of an idea of the structure of the container, we can actually get the mass pretty easily. So I'm going to place that into that equation. So what we have here is, although this is supposed to be row, sorry, those are supposed to be the I don't know why it's not. Um, this actually simplifies quite nicely, V for volume. And notice I put indices here because they are different. You know, the volumes of this thing is different than the volume of this thing. Um, if you look at that area. Um, and the volume you can look at in terms of, you know, these L's if you'd like. But this is, generally speaking, you can just picture the volume right here. And they're going to be different. Um, so, um, the thing that will be the same though is rho right here. So these will cancel out and we'll get something quite nice. And we get this relationship which is actually the definition of flow rate. And flow rate is called volume per time. They use this a lot in the AP. And a lot of times they give you some dimensions to find the air, I'm sorry, the volume. So it's in some time. And usually time is not in seconds because that would be, you know, most useful. They we would actually give it to you in minutes. So if they any any time they ask for flow rate, this is what they're looking for, volume per time. But as you might imagine, in order to keep these ratios the same, is if you have a large volume, you need to um, allow for a large time. So to keep this volume, I'm sorry, this ratio the same, if this increases, this must increase. And same thing, if this is smaller, you gotta keep these ratios the same. So now I'm going to actually take a look at their dimensions. So volume is a meters cubed and time is a second, right? So 
what I did is just rewrote these, excuse me, <clears throat> in terms of their dimensions. But watch what I could do. Um, what I did is actually I separated out the cube. So now I have meters squared times um, meters. So, and this is all for, you know, the indice of 1. So I actually did not change the equation. I just wrote it out slightly different. But we know that a meters squared is actually by definition an area. And we know that a meters per second is by definition a velocity. So that's where this comes from. It actually does equate to the same thing. They come from the same idea. And we just have three technically different ways to calculate this continuity. It is either mass per time, volume per time, or we have areas and velocities. Three different methods to help us calculate flow rate. Um, so another thing too, although I don't have it written here, you can actually calculate flow rate, volume per time, or area per volume, because as you can see, this is the same units over here. So some common applications, um, some major applications actually, is blood flow. So um, this means that if blood is flowing through this main artery here, we can see that the blood must be flowing faster through here and even faster over here. Um, so when you, people who study um, this type of um, action will actually use this flow rate um, in particular in the medical field. And here is a common example. So say you have a blood flow out of the heart into the aorta um, where the inner radius is very small and they have a measured speed of 0.33 meters per second eventually reaches the capillary system where the fluid speed is 3.4 times 10 to the negative fourth meters per second. Find the effective cross area um, of the entire capillary system. So to do this type of problem we're going to use this idea. So we have a1 velocity 1 equal to a2 velocity 2. Sorry. Just like that. So referring back to our problem, which I could just literally copy and paste this problem over here. There we go. So we have the area of the first one and the speed. Now, like I said, they give you the radius and not the area. So the area is going to effectively be, we use the symbol pi r squared of the first one times its velocity equals to the area of the second one which is what we're solving for. And notice it says find the effective cross-sectional area. So it seems a little misleading, but we can actually just leave it as A. And then we have the speed of the second one. So there's our setup. And if we solve this out, we will find that the area be 0 0.25 meters cubed. So that is how you solve a problem like this. And you can see this one is really nice because it gives you all this stuff um, implicitly. The only challenge was noticing that the inner radius, um, they give you the radius in that area. So the biggest problem is to make sure that you keep the same area per same velocity. In other words, you don't mix these values up. That is the the biggest problem if there is anyone solving these. So in conclusion, um, I have defined for you flow rate where you can use area times the velocity uh, and you can see that the flow rate is in units of volume per second so literally volume per second is also acceptable. Um, and then you can actually calculate the flow rate of the previous problem but taking the area times the velocity and you can see you'll get this value if you calculate that out. So here's an AP problem I just wanted to show you with my last 10 seconds that um, here you can actually ask it asks for the flow rate so why don't you try out this problem and see if you can solve it. 
I'll see you for the next video for Bernoulli's Principle.